What's going on, y'all? Today, we're going to do a little ugh, installation of all the components that goes into our intake manifold. This is for my Cathedral Port one ton project. It's a bit of a high ram, so it clears the idler pulley over here. Um, so, a little brief over the parts. We got the intake manifold. It's super cool. Yeah, get it over there. We got ourselves fuel injectors, AE-1001s. Those are 36 pounds an hour, in case you're wondering about the part number. Then we need the rails. These guys right here run through a die, did a thing. I think there's like an ESD process that goes on there. Got a little number one marked right here. Injectors, uh, these, uh, these take an Allen cap screw. Uh, maybe I'll find my Allen wrenches in this, who knows, but and injector rail. Injector rail, little crossover for it. Now my crossover is going to be in the front because of how my fuel is going to come through. Maybe I'll put it in the back. I don't really know. Then we got the fun part. This one ton build is going to get a drive-by wire setup and a 4L80 transmission. So the drive-by wire throttle body, <coughs> which is a raw cast. Oh. Hardware bag, don't forget that. Raw cast thing, it's uh, 92 millimeters. It's really cool though. It's got this low RPM taper in here. So when the throttle is barely open, well, it'll be sitting like this, my apologies. But when it's when it's barely open doing its job, the, the airflow will ramp in, but there's also, it's not exactly round. It's kind of lobed here in the corners. So it bypasses air really good, so you can keep a lower angle of throttle plate for heavier cam vehicles. So, super swoopy. It's a six pin, by the way, right there. There's a little wiring harness for the style of map sensor we're gonna be using. So this is just a one bar. If you need to use a three bar, you might have to drill a little, big, little bit bigger hole in the back of the throttle body. Not a massive deal, really just depending on what you're doing and how you're doing it. Look at this thing. So. A lot of y'all know, that's been doing this stuff for a minute, that when these intakes run on an engine, you hear a little tinny resonance coming right from the center. So a lot of people, they'll strip the paint down, they'll TIG in a, a nice brace down the back. This is actually a little bit heavier gauge aluminum, so you don't really run into that same resonance noise, you know, that sounds like all your lifters are about to exit stage left, you know? Another thing you gotta be wary of is when you're getting these things out the box and you're about to do a real sweet install, like dial it in. You gotta make sure you get the hardware bag out of it. Look down the throat, look at that beautiful thing. Nice, the nice runners, these are long runners. So in these long runner styles, when the air velocity gets up, you end up in this uh, inertial supercharging situation. So the air gets so much weight and velocity that it actually you can run up until beyond 100% VE. So you get like, depending on the situation, you get so much airflow and density of the air, so it has weight that'll actually be above our atmosphere and other nerd related things. So let's get to installing some stuff. You need some Allens. You need a little lubricant, no biggie. You gotta figure out what and which rails are going where. We got aces over here so we can put it on here and look real cool. And you also notice there's a little bit of an angle sometimes on these. These are gonna go straight down, but this is where the Allen cap screw goes. So this is gonna be outboard. Pow, there it is. Dash eight ORB to dash six, real nice. You wanna get the O-rings as soon as you unbox these things, get the O-rings and roll them on there. Make sure they're good and seated and in good health, no nicks or gouges or anything. You wanna do it to even the fittings you're not using because those O-rings will disappear on you. And, well, they're just harder to get. So if you notice, we got one of these. So we got four of these right here, dash eight ORBs to dash six AM. Then we got one dash eight ORB plug. So I'm not running, not truly running a return from rail system. I want a deadhead from my uh, Corvette style regulator into this. So. Or I might not, I might just change it up. But pretty much, you're gonna need one type of fitting at the ends of the rails. We're just gonna assume, you know how that goes, 
we're just going to assume that I am going to run a return. I'm going to thread all these things in. And this, I'll put in the top of the toolbox and forget I have it until I buy another one. And then I'll realize I spent $20 for no reason. So let's load this thing up full of injectors. This really ain't too bad, all this, all this business. You know, and speaking of business, it's hard to believe I get paid for doing this. This is great. These are Pico EV6 injectors. They are 36 pound an hour uh, injectors. These were rated 36 pound an hour at 43 and a half PSI. So if you do a bit of math, it gets pretty close to like an LS3 injector, which are like 40 and some change stock at 58 PSI. Not, not going to sing any songs today. Not going to do anything weird. Put a little bit of grease on here and goo up my O-rings. This is white lithium. This is what I had in the shop. Um, but it's, it's slick enough to get that thing in there. It's all good. We don't want to split the O-rings because sometimes, even with the machining process we got going on, which is actually super top-notch as compared to some of the other manufacturers of these uh, sheet metal intakes, um, you know, they're chamfered well. The coating is pretty good. The welds are pretty spot. Not too bad. And the, one of the great things I love about our intakes, because we actually, you know, asked for a bit of custom design behind it, is we used a heavier gauge aluminum, but also the, the plating back here, on the, at least on the outside edges, are nice and chamfered. So we're not just sticking metal together. We're actually filling the metal in and making it stronger. So we got somebody out there putting the boost into it. It's not just splitting back here at the back edge, which uh, some of y'all have seen. So, inboard, cool. We can go outboard with the injectors. We can go inboard with the injectors. We have enough space in here, and I want to keep my wires tucked, that I'm going to go inboard with them. So, a couple ways we do it. I just ease it in there. Kind of, a uh, 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 little bit like that. Get them seated. Make sure the O-rings ain't fouled up any. Oh wait, I said I was going to the inside, right? Yeah, I'm crazy. All right, inside, because the relief, or the, the counter bore, actually as it is, for the Allen cap screw is on the outside. So we're gonna put our injector connectors to the inside. And maybe I'll regret that later, but I don't know how I'm gonna lay out my wiring harness yet. I wanna keep it as clean as possible. I got some really nice valve covers. Uh, from a friend of mine that are just stellar. So there it is, loaded up. Look at that goodness. Fantastic, right? Right there. We got, we got one. Let's get the other one done. So we get our injectors rails all dialed in. We get them to the fairly centered. They wiggle up and free, all that jazz. We could do it a couple ways. We can go ahead and seat these in, which is fine to do, but you might end up with a bit of difficulties. The way I like to do it, I like to grip it and just kind of massage them down into their orifice. You just don't want to split the O-rings, so it does take a little bit of pressure. Maybe what I'll do as I lubricate these holes up a little bit more. They're doing good. I just feel like I'm forcing it too much, which is what it is. You don't have to go all the way down in the bore. You just kind of got to get the chamfered edge a little bit. Because these things are, the bungs are welded in, then CNC comes back later, and they, they counter bore and chamfer, and works out pretty well. Let's see. There we go. That one started. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Sent it. Now I like to check down in here to see if there's any bits of O-ring chilling. Oh, these are gonna fit great. On the short ram intake, you can't really get the injectors on the backside. I just, I want them to look the best, you know? Look at that. 
Cool thing is where my fingerprints are all greasy, it really, really brings the shine out. But check that out. Really nice. Just dial. Check it out. So these brackets right here, these are the bent brackets for it. Let me, man, where'd I put that camera? Look at that, bent bracket. So this bracket right here, it's got, it's got a little joggle to it. You know, it comes up, tangent line, tangent line, comes up, tangent line, angle, good to go. So I want to call it my seven bracket. I don't know, or an L, could be an L. These longer Allen cap screws right here go through the rails. So there's that. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six brackets, a couple cap screws. On these things right here, these smaller cap screws, it's a button head. It's so, it's uh, not too big a deal, but you want to make sure to, uh, you know, these are going to be a lock washer situation. So there should be 12 lock washers in this bag, six nuts, and let's make sure that's correct. Yep, six nuts, six stainless steel flat washers, and then enough lock washers to go around. Yeah, looks like we, uh, let's see, yep, that's six, that's four, five, six, we're good. All right, so these things are slotted in one end. That's not a massive deal, uh, but they're solid on the top, so that that's going to bring it down and allow a little bit of wiggle in and out, depending on how these things have set in there. So, slide that to the side. Let's start getting these things lined up. Just, ah, oh, well, maybe I should do this and find out what Allen this thing fits. So, looks like the, this Allen, at least, is in uh, American Freedom units. That's good. And this one. So we got here. Not quite. This one's missing a wrench, so that's naturally going to be the one. Right there. Looks like the uh, the one for the Allen cap is five millimeter metric, and the small one for the small Allen screws is a four millimeter. Too easy. Now let's uh, let's finagle these things in there. So. We got that, we got, because this is a situation of, if you got a slotted hole, you want to use a fender washer. That's just, just a thing. Because you don't want the, you don't want the fender washer, you don't want the, the, the sprung portion of the actual lock washer itself to come up down into the hole itself. So you want it to go onto a flat surface, onto a flat surface, that way, it is most appropriate for that, so looks like that right there. Nice little washer, doing its job, everybody's happy. And this is what I was talking about with the, I don't have the right Allens for this because you need one with a ball head on it, a four millimeter with a ball head, but I might be able to squeeze that in. That's, that's looking good. We can go ahead and kind of spin this thing in a little bit. Now where these are gonna be, these nuts here, are gonna be on a relatively flat plane of existence. You can go ahead and, and throw that lock washer on there. It uh, makes it happy. Doesn't matter too much. I mean, I would still prefer a washer stack up. That's just the inner nerd in me. And I also need to figure out what size this is. Let me go find this nut size here. You seen it here, folks? It's a 10 millimeter. Go ahead and get this snug down. We'll tighten it up later. And rinse and repeat. This is where everything goes into fast forward mode. Perfection. Look at that. I love it. We got that ace is rocking hard down here. This is looking good. We got that up there looking great. Oh my God. All right, let's get this thing spun around and go ahead and put this on. If it didn't love it, I flat out wouldn't do it. We're in. 
Good stuff. Look how nice this thing looks. I'll do a little close-up pan around here later, but we're in now. See the injector connectors? They're just tucked back in there. I'll get some better light and kind of zoom you guys around a little bit when it's totally assembled. I actually, I got an LS motor back here in the tech area. I'm just going to set it on top. It, it does have better lighting over there. It's not so much like a cave and uh, kind of show you what it looks like. I think this is going to be the business right here. Yeah. I'll go ahead and take this out and put that blanking plug in there. Set this aside for something later that I'll forget to do. Blanking plug in. Little lower profile, but you want to use a nice AN wrench so that you're not marring it up too bad. That is just loyal right there. Seat it in, nice and snug. What a great wrench. I can't wait to start trying to give these things away every once in a blue moon. Look at that thing. Goodness. Back up on the wall you go. So now we got the blank plug on it right here. This thing is gonna be an alternator right here. Throttle body right here. Tensioner pulley like down here so I can actually put an air filter on. But if you look right here, you can see here's where the vacuum ports on this are. You can go ahead and put plugs in if you want, if you don't need none of them. Uh, my vehicle has Hydra Boost, so that's not a problem or a factor. I don't need any other vacuum connections. So I'm going to get, which we, they don't come in the kit, but they do have the barbed fittings that go in here. I prefer a little bit of PTFE paste to thread them in. I don't like PTFE material itself floating around in my intake or in my fuel system either. So liquid stuff always. But yeah, I'm going to put plugs in this because I don't need them. This down here is where the map sensor goes. It comes with this really nice plug, which, if you don't have any fingernails, is interesting to get out sometimes. Come on. There it is. And if you're wondering what diameter that plug is, I'm going to go outside of O-ring on the OD here. We'll just go right here. We're talking like 0.49. So if you're drilling this hole for these map sensors here to go here, right? You want to use it, you want to undersize it, and then you're going to ream it up to a 0.498. And that's going to just get this right in there without too much friction, looking real good. And that's 0.498 of an inch, so just under a half inch drip, drill bit. You throw a half inch drill bit through here, it's going to... It's not really going to seal up on this o-ring extremely well it'll work ish it'll work ish <laughs> it's a terrible way to say it but it'll work ish so here we go our intake we've already eyeballed it we looked down the runners we made sure there's no plastic bags or extra hardware if you leave a bag of hardware in this intake it's a bad day super bad day but here in this box is our throttle body now, I thought about, because it needs to go this direction, I thought about actually, uh, you know, painting this thing black, but I might not. I'm... Well, that's embarrassing. I might not paint it black. Haven't decided, might do it. I gotta see what kind of air filter I'm using and what that's gonna look like. If I got a shiny air filter hanging out the snout of this thing, looking real cool, I want it to flow good with my throttle body. But if I end up painting the thing, I'm probably going to do a gloss Cerakote on it so it matches this material really nice. We'll see. But first, we'll get it up and running. We get back in my O-ring bag here. So in the intake bag, there's 10 screws with lock washers. There is eight 
O-rings with capture points on it, and then there is one round O-ring. This round O-ring sits right in this real nice groove right here. Just force it in. You don't need to glue it. No RTV needed. Just make sure it's nice and clean. There's no defects in it. So feel it out first. Give it a little stretch. See if it feels good. And then you get back to your hardware bag. This is some stainless hardware. And it's got the right Allen key for the throttle body. Rip the top of the bag off because you're never going to need it again. And then you do. Uh, <laughs> so there's that. And the Allen key that comes with this thing it's it's honestly it looks like it's a five millimeter so if you lose this actually better than the really cheap one i got out of the car toolkit if you lose this one i mean you might cry i would and i'll probably lose it throw the bolt through so this bolt if you got a normal throttle body you only need you know five or six threads coming out the back side you don't have to go over zealous with how many threads you got the uh the drive-by cable throttle bodies are actually a thinner flange so the bolts from that will not work and these are like a, a six millimeter by 1.0 or an eight I can't really get my eyeballs on that it looks like a 1.0 thread pitch but I'm pretty sure they're a six millimeter bolt Let's see what we got here. In the hole. I need to make sure to get my head. Wait, I gotta get the Aces logo and get my head in there for everybody. Aces for life. Definitely don't cross thread this. So if you got too much tension up here, it'll kick the throttle body out and then you're trying to thread the bottom ones in and it'll just straight eat them sideways. And then you know, you better hope cross threading is better than Loctite at that point because you got a one shot at that one. Yeah, not really. I guess you could Healy coil it, but that'd be such a pain. Then you have to take your intake back off, etc., etc., shavings, whatnots. So, most of these bolts only torque to like 89 inch pounds or pounds inch. That is 89. That is not enough. But it is just enough because you're just trying to squish an o-ring and then secure this thing and seal it you're not trying to permanently mount this industrial strength flange you're going into like 6000 series aluminum to 6000 series aluminum that's weldable and all that jazz so it don't take much about 89 inch pounds for this uh, that's also what the torque spec is on this I usually just go until the O-rings feel really good and seated and everything seems to be even and nothing's left loose and then make sure that at least 89 inch pounds is on it. Um, so I've got a little quarter inch. I already got a quarter inch one set up with like a long extension so it's just just run around and click it. No worries. Drive-by wire, no IAC, no TPS, none of that stuff. It's got some stepper motors inside and whatnot or servos or what have you. It's got some gears in it does a pretty good job this has two TPS sensors in it they check each other so there's two in the pedal two in the throttle body so if they're they're not congruent and they're not at the same rate it'll put this thing into like it only lets you have like 17% throttle and X amount of RPMs and put it into a limp mode essentially so there's that here we go we got this on we got this on we got this on this is going to be my fuel inlet right here my fuel is coming in from around the back of the block, around, and she's gonna go right here. On the back side, we got this crossover tube. I'm gonna run this crossover tube up because I got some other stuff that's gonna be down here. But for now, we'll just run it down here. Nah, we'll run it up here, maybe. Let me know if it feels strange that uh, Ben isn't in here, too. Look at that. Look how nice that is. Nice and smooth. Look at that. Just what a beaut. I'm going to head 
I'm going to drop this on our in-house LS that we're building up for our test stand, and then we'll really see how it looks. But first, I have to move an experimental tunnel ram, big block Chevy, multi-port intake that I can't even tell anybody about because it's so top secret and it kind of looks cool. So I got to make sure to move that off the engine first because it's hyper top secret and then put our stuff on there. So let's just go ahead and take this bit of proprietary material off the stand and then put this on. Look at this. Look at this thing. Just setting in there, looking sharp, nothing crazy. I don't know what to say. <laughs> My truck's going to be awesome. I mean, the uh, project vehicle is going to be amazing. All right, we're back over here now. Let's roll this thing over on its back. Rub its belly. These gaskets right here. These things, you don't want to do what I'm gonna do, which is just put them in and then walk the 150 feet to the back parking lot with this thing just hanging, but they stay in there really good. So I'm gonna do that anyways. They're not really gonna go anywhere. So you gotta make sure the seals. These things right here, they got these little ribs in the side of them that force their way into the o-ring recess itself and they stay in pretty good so i'm gonna go ahead and put these in i think it looks pretty good sitting on the motor back here pretty excited about it hopefully it's snowing when i put it on that way the weather's perfect but this build is going to be great we only got a few more things to do on this build it really comes down to removing a little bit of wiring and then uh, just a, a few small things like that. Um, then we're gonna drop this intake on, put some sweet valve covers on that I got that holds the coils. It'll be all right. We have assembled an intake. We got the mounting hardware for the engine. We got the barb fittings that I'm not gonna use because of, you know, I'm, I don't need any of them, so I'll put them there. I'm just gonna put some plugs in, which we don't have plugs in this kit because we have the barb fittings, but uh, I've got so many different things back here with plugs, it's, it's not a massive deal. So we got that going. Well, hopefully you enjoyed my ramblings today. We, we assembled an intake. I think it's gonna be fantastic. I've put a few of these on a couple of vehicles. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty pretty happy with them. The one that's on our uh, in-house Blazer with a very well-built 5.3 I did with an extra, extra large cam and drive-by wire, you know, the resonance that it makes is very insignificant as to the other brand of intake we have on, on the Subaru. One of the other techs here has a turbo LS swap Subaru. That thing sounds like the valve train's flying apart, but you put your hand on top of it, sounds amazing. We don't get that that much with this, just a little bit right right here in the middle of residence, but it's like such an insignificant amount. You really gotta be listening for it to like hear it, you know? Well, hope this video has been informative. Uh, got any other questions, comment them, email us, what have you not, it's all good. Uh, we really don't mind, we're just here to help the best we can on the tech side of things. That's why we're making these videos now. So, have a good day.